I'm David Stishon, and this presentation is on Molly Pitcher. Specifically, who was Molly Pitcher, and what was a Molly Pitcher? During the Revolutionary War, camp followers were the spouses of soldiers who went to serve as laundresses, seamstresses, cooks, and to provide other support while their soldiers were in camp, on the march, or on the battlefield. Specifically, what is a pitcher? Well, when we think in the terms of pitcher, this is our immediate thought, but this is a noun. What they meant was pitcher as a verb, actually fetching water. Water was very important on the battlefield. Uh, Private William Hayes uh, was an artillery soldier. He fired cannons. This is a replica of a swivel gun. It's smaller than the cannons used on the battlefield at Monmouth, New Jersey, but it's a muzzle-loading black powder cannon just like those used in the battle. That means all the powder and the cannonball have to be placed in the muzzle in this end and then rammed down to the breech on this end. After you fire a cannon like this, the sparks that are inside have to be extinguished. They have to be put out with a sponge, like this. The pitcher, or water buckets, are used on the battlefield to fill these sponge buckets. This is the sponge on the end of a rammer. You would place the sponge into water and place it into the barrel to swab out and put out and extinguish all the sparks on the inside. That's important because the cartridges are either in flannel or in parchment. Any spark inside there could set this off before uh, the cannonball was supposed to come out so that it could injure or kill members of the crew. Every 10 shots or so, the sponge bucket needs to be refilled. And so at least two members of the crew have to be going back and forth between a stream and the cannon during the course of the battle. Shooting cannons is very hot work. The battle uh, what took place uh, in New Jersey in June, it was over 100 degrees, they say. Over one third of the casualties in the battle were from heat stroke, not just from uh, uh, bullets and bayonets. And so water was critical to the soldiers. They would drink several canteens apiece during the course of the, of the hot battle, and most of them took off their coats and many of them their, their shirts during the battle. Private William Hayes was wounded during the Battle of Monmouth. We're not certain whether it was from a bullet or from heat exhaustion. According to an account from a young Patriot soldier of the 12th Connecticut Regiment, Joseph Plum Martin, quote, One little incident happened during the heat of the cannonade, which I was eyewitness to, which I think would be unpardonable not to mention. A woman whose husband belonged to the artillery and who was then attached to a piece of the engagement attended with her husband at the piece the whole time, and while in the act of reaching a cartridge and having one of her feet as far before the other as she could step, a cannon shot from the enemy passed directly between her legs without doing any other damage than carrying away all the lower part of her petticoat. Looking at it with apparent unconcern, she observed that it was lucky it did not pass a little higher, for in that case it might have carried away something else, and continued her occupation." Unquote. Another Molly Pitcher was Margaret Corbin. She was severely wounded and her husband was killed at the Battle of Fort Washington in 1776. The legend was that she had worn a, a soldier's uniform and that she had aimed and fired a cannon, which is unlikely. However, she became the first woman in history to, be, uh, to receive a, a pension for battlefield disability. Regardless of whether a cannonball passed through the petticoats of a Molly pitcher, it doesn't matter because the greatest killer for Americans in uniform until World War II was disease. And so all of the soldiers and camp followers who served in Proctor's company had gone through uh, the starvation and freezing temperatures of Valley Forge the winter before. And so what they went through was just as dangerous as being shot at on the battlefield. The spouses of artillerymen in the U.S. military are awarded the Order of Molly Pitcher in recognition for their service to soldiers. Mary Ludwood Hayes is buried in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. 
she rests next to her second husband, and her grave is protected by a cannon and a statue because of her bravery and her legacy. I'm Dave Stishon, and I wish you Godspeed.